rise to the flesh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Council Member Dunaway. Present. Council Member Fitch. Council Member Gray. Present. Council Member Clancy. Here. Council Member Trakis. Present. Council Member Harder. Here. Presiding Officer, you have a quorum. Very well, thank you. Um, is there a motion for approval of the journal of the meeting of August 6, 2019? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. The August 16, 2019 journal is approved. We have no bid openings this evening, so we move to communications. Mr. Presiding Officer, we have no tax compromises this evening, so we will move to zoning matters. Under zoning matters, item number one, fourth district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number two, fourth district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number three, sixth district. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number four, sixth district. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number five, fifth district. Receive and file. So ordered. Moving on to other communications, item number one. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number two. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number three. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number four. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number five, fourth district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number six, fourth district. Please hold. So ordered. Item number seven. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion through item number nine, and that will be the order. Item number ten. Receive, file, and the issuance of the request for proposal be approved as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Item number 11. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number 12, 5th District. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 13. Receive, file, and the issuance of the request for proposal be approved as requested. <clears throat> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 14. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number 15. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number 16, second district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Please read the add-ons. Under other communications, item number one, fifth district. Receive and file. So ordered. Item number two, seventh district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate leg legislation. So ordered. Item number three, sixth district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number four, first and second districts. Receive and file, and the <clears throat> that will be the order. Report of the county executive. Thanks, Ernie. First, I'd like to welcome our new county council member, uh, Kelly Dunaway, representing the good people of the second district. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Um, I just uh, finished my first 100 days in office, and, well, we've been busy. Um, as we move to the next 100 days, I'd like to double down on my commitment to be open and transparent in our decision-making and collaborate with other regional leaders, including everyone on this council. We've had a shared mission, a mission in this region to make sure we run a strong government that works for everyone that we represent. In my first... 100-day report, I pointed out the three areas that we're going to be focusing on, restoring trust in government, uh, addressing our biggest challenges, and making sure that government works for everyone. 
we just can't set aside and continue to set aside the complex problems like policing and public safety, criminal justice reform, and the disparities that are holding back some of our communities. I've been in regular conversations with the St. Louis Mayor Lida Cruz as we look at ways to tackle some of these issues in a regional way. And the mayor and I talk about uh, ways that we can run our um, respective governments more efficiently and uh, with more organization. Soon we'll be, we will be called upon to appoint a board of freeholders. Um, those individuals will be charged with making a proposal that the city voters and the county voters can consider as a possible change in the way St. Louis City and St. Louis County government functions. Any decision made by the Board of Freeholders must be approved by voters in St. Louis County and in St. Louis City. And I believe that's the right way to do it. We have to take a hard look about how we govern ourselves in St. Louis County, how we address our disparities, and how we can uh, compete best nationally and internationally to attract business and grow our economy. The Midwest is growing slower than other parts of the country. The St. Louis region is growing a little bit slower than the, than the Midwest. We have to be smart about talking about ideas and opportunities to catch up and move ahead. Part of our regional co uh, collaboration is to meet with the 88 mayors in St. Louis County, and we've been busy with those meetings on Monday. I met with the mayors in, in Councilwoman Clancy's district. We had a good conversation. We talked about roads and bridges. We talked about policing and public safety. And we talked about keeping the lines of communication open, continuing to work on ideas to allow county residents to benefit from a collaborative county government with our county council, our administration, and our municipalities working together. Later in the day, yesterday, I joined Governor Parson and Council Member Harder mm -hmm. at the Powerplex development in the former St. Louis Mills complex in Hazelwood. This is an ambitious proposal, and I want to credit Councilman Harder for his leadership over the past two years, as he recognized when this, this proposal didn't quite make it in Chesterfield, he recognized the opportunity at the Mills project and put the developer together um, with that opportunity. We are excited that this $63 million project is very close to completion. Um, we um, were excited that the County Council was able to approve uh, CVC funds, uh, tourism funds, to invest in this project along with some county resources to help this, uh, this, del this uh, development succeed, bringing new jobs to St. Louis County and attracting visitors from outside to spend their money in St. Louis County. Um, after the Powerplex tour, I participated in an event at Enterprise here in Clayton. Um, this, was, uh, this was really um, an event with uh, Mark Redman, the executive of the uh, um, U.S. Chamber of Commerce in Ireland, who was in St. Louis to meet um, uh, business leaders who were interested in doing business in Ireland. And this event was co-hosted by Kevin O'Malley, the former U.S. Ambassador from Ireland, who is from St. Louis. Um, the relationship between those two individuals is really a big part of the business community in St. Louis and our relationship with our growing uh, partners in Ireland. It was very, excited to, uh, very exciting to see um, those seeds that those two planted many years ago. And then today we have a new announcement, uh, Bungie, uh, Bungie Limited, an agribusiness company that um, is here in St. Louis County, is moving their world headquarters to St. Louis County from upstate New York. They're bringing an additional 200 jobs <coughs> with that move, but we're uh, certainly excited to see the momentum continue with agribusiness and agricultural technology, um, with more and more momentum building here in St. Louis, building um, on what Bayer has in Chesterfield and in, in, uh, in Creve Corps along with the Danforth Plant Science Complex. This is part of our, our new economy in the St. Louis region. I want to recognize the um, uh, St. Louis Economic Development Partnership and the St. Louis World Trade Center for facilitating um, this partnership and this opportunity for St. Louis. We look forward to welcoming the new Bungie employees to our St. Louis community. That's all for now, Ernie. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. I'm sure everyone else does as well.
um, report of special committees. Ethics committee will hold that on the order of business, which brings us to public forum. Mr. Presiding Officer, this evening we have 13 speakers. Very well. Um, folks, this is the opportunity for the public to address the council. I know myself and my colleagues look forward to it each week. Uh, we do have some rules that we'd like you to try and limit your comments to three minutes if possible. I'll give you as much grace as I can on that, certainly. Uh, but I would appreciate your efforts to it, it keep your comments within that general period of time. And we'll take you in the order that you sign the sheet outside. Um, and with that, go ahead and uh, call the first speaker. Our first speaker is Donna Slemmer. Good evening, Council. You have to forgive me. I have to read because I get nervous speaking in front of you. My name is Donna Slemmer from Overland, Missouri. Don't be nervous. I'm from though. Overland. Can you hear me? Don't be nervous. <laughs> okay. I'm nervous. Of course, I'm from Missouri. Okay. I'm here to talk about St. Louis County Animal Care and Control. It's been one month since Spring Schmidt stood here to discuss the results of the audit that was done. One month is a lifetime for the animals at ACC. She promised updates on the website about what was being done, but we've yet to see any. Is it too much to ask that she return here and inform the council and the public of any changes that have taken place? The ad for the new shelter director is so long and wordy that it makes us wonder if she truly is looking for someone with compassion to save the animals. We know progress takes time, but there are things in the audit that could have taken place immediately without a new director. Simple things like proper cleaning, better communication between staff and volunteers, and simply making the choice to not euthanize that leash biting dog. For many dogs, biting the leash is a sign they want to play. And, and since short walks are all the enrichment these dogs get, leash biting can hardly be construed as aggressive behavior. They are merely excited to finally be getting some attention. To Spring Schmidt and the council, we ask, are you truly committed to making positive changes at St. Louis County Animal Care and Control? Or is this all just smoke and mirrors that the former administration put forth? For instance, per CityGate Associates audit, it was recommended that County Animal Control utilize vendors that offer quality goods at discounted bulk prices. Council members, County AC dogs desperately need collars. To date, collars have been purchased by volunteers, but these collars leave the building when a dog is adopted or sadly euthanized. There are typically 50 dogs, sorry, lost. okay, I lost my place. There are, there are typically 50 dogs in areas 300 and 400. 90% of these dogs are without collars. And speaking with a volunteer, and I'd like it officially noted, that they request collars be funded from the two plus million dollar AC budget in order to facilitate ease of leashing and the safety of dogs anxious to relieve themselves who have often been waiting 18 hours for a potty break. A recommended CityGate vendor, CS Specialties, offers collars at around $2 per collar of orders of over 50. Surely St. Louis County's multi-million dollar AC budget can earmark a few hundred dollars for collars that will facilitate safe leashing of the dogs in your care. We are their voices. We won't go away. Do you hear us? Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker is Tashonda True. Good evening, Council. My name is Tashonda Troop, and I live in Pine Line. On August 3rd, I held a candlelight for the inmates that we lost, and I really thought I would see some members of our government standing with the people in solidarity, but again, I was crushed by my government. I do want to thank Lieutenant Colonel Doyle, Reverend Duval, and Hazel Irby for attending and standing not only with me, but standing with the people in this heartbreaking cause. I know this is your job, and the lawyers don't allow you to have much contact with me in fear of litigation, but this wasn't about me. This was an opportunity for the county to show the people that they stand for what's right. Since you weren't there, let me tell you briefly why the candlelight was titled, When They Don't See Us. 
I don't know, I don't know how many of you have seen When They See Us, but in short, it was about prejudice and stereotyping when law enforcement or government see our black or brown skin. When They Don't See Us was not about black or brown skin, stereotyping or prejudice. When They Don't See Us is about being stripped of your Eighth Amendment rights and being treated inhumanely regardless of your race or skin color. When They Don't See Us is about deliberate indifference. An inmate told a guard that he thinks Larry Revis was having a seizure, and the guard told him, I don't know about that. A nurse saw John Shy in a pool of his own blood and told him to clean the blood up and take a shower. Lamar Ketchings couldn't walk, eat, and had multiple complaints and was told to stop faking. Daniel Stout asked for medical attention and was told to wait until the next day. All four of them had treatable conditions. Dr. Stephen Gore said it was unconscionable that someone dies from APL, the type of leukemia Lamar had, because it's 97% curable. Why did he die? Why did any of them die? Because they didn't see them as human beings. They didn't see their desperate need for medical aid. They didn't see the pain and suffering they were enduring. That, that's the meaning behind the title. It's a lot more I could tell you about the title, but I only have three minutes before I go. I do want to ask you, Mr. Page, why is Julia Childry still employed in this county? Stinger's sentencing memorandum should have been enough to show you that she was in on it with him. Pay attention to what he said about the jail. He named her. He also said, we like it effed up. He didn't say I, meaning himself. He said we. She was his partner in this chaos that was going on in the jail, and letting her stay is saying the county approves of her participation. <coughs> show us that this county stands for what's right. More than anything, show me, because I'm slowly losing faith that my government will step up and do the right thing. Because so far, all I have seen is our government employing individuals that lack integrity, compassion, empathy, sincerity, and common morals. And our government itself lacks transparency, accountability, and credibility. The four deaths that happened in your justice center and the county has not and the county has not been transparent, and no one has been held accountable. And we have a council who have who make decisions who can't make decisions because the lawyers always tie their hands. When will the county do better? Thank you, Ms. True. Next speaker is Lori Klingbale. Hi, my name is Lori Klingville. I live in St. Louis City, and I don't know who to give these to. If you would like them, I have some hands. Clark, right over here, ma'am. I am here to speak for the animals at St. Louis County Animal Care and Control. A few definitions of the word care. The provision of what is necessary for the health, welfare, maintenance, and protection of something or someone feel concern or interest, attach importance to something, look after and provide for the needs of. To provide for their most basic needs is nice, but we need to be able to provide for their emotional well-being. A mature dog is pretty much compared to that of a three to four year old toddler. You don't expect a toddler to learn things on their own. So let's not expect a dog to learn on their own as well. Um, if a dog isn't enriched, they will decline. They will show this in their actions and behaviors. You will see leash biting. You will see excessive jumping. You will see clamoring to get out of their kennels, as well as getting stuck in their kennels and biting at the bars. Now, with that said, put yourself in their place. You don't have the ability to reason or understand. You don't know why you're not getting out. You don't know why you're neglected for just two 15-minute walks a day, if that. I also struggle to understand why we are able to walk the animals around the office park, but yet we're not allowed to take them off for further enrichment, say, to a park for a couple of hours. And then I also question the reason these dogs are being labeled rescue only. Leash biting, a dog is too strong and jumpy, a dog has a reluctance to be around men. Those can all be worked with. When you label a dog rescue only, You've got a rescue that's going to need to pull them or be willing to. But in order for that rescue to pull them, you're going to need a foster. So now this delays more time on the dog 
with the potential to being put down because now they're further stressed. And I read the um, audit a little bit and I think a little bit of counseling and returning dogs. Some people are at their wit's end. I know when I had my girl and I knew her a year and a half before I adopted her, I had three times I thought about returning her. The one comment they made to me, not county, where I adopted her, um, was I knew how she was when I got her. That to me right there knew what she would be subject to at the shelter. And on that end, when adopting out a dog, I think it's also to do a little bit of education. If you get these dogs enriched, get them in play groups, get their styles, get to know them, assess the adopter or future adopter's lifestyle. Fit the dog to the family. You're not gonna get a hyper, super, leash jumping dog to someone that's got a two-year-old. Um, so then... Mr. Presiding Officer, that's... that's right. Go ahead, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, so does the... Shelter currently have the ability to do this and many much more need a change. I'm going to guess they don't, otherwise there would be a director in the position who understands what it's like to run a shelter. Let's take this audit and learn from it. Get the director in there, make these changes. Proactive is so much better than reactive. Become the no-kill shelter that I know county and others can be because within several years, that is the goal and the hope to make St. Louis and Oak Hill City. Thank you, Ms. Cunningham. And you're welcome, and I'm sure you'll get to see me again next week. Okay. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> next speaker is Clinton Wall. Um, my name is Clinton Wall, and I'm an employee of Animal Care and Control, and I'm with some of my lovely coworkers tonight. Um, Um, I'm here to represent the concerned staff from St. Louis County Care and Animal Control. We as employees believe we are here, I'm sorry, we as employees are here because we feel we've been backed into a corner with no other effective method to make our concerns known to policymakers. Our concern comes from the current discussion and planning to privatize functions of the animal shelter within the loss of county employment for many dedicated employees. We feel as this come about due to misrepresentation of facts, with counterproductive management and policies changes by various parties over the last several years. We would like to take a chance to finally voice our side of the story and offer a different strategy future for our shelter management. We think we would provide a higher level of service to county residents. We have tried to voice our concerns through normal supervisory channels with no effect, so now we are here and we appreciate this chance to talk to you. We, the staff, have dealt with the political outfall of Steve Stanger tanking office since 2015. The staff have been a political pawn in that game ever since. Steve Stanger moved Animal Control directly to report to his office on the ninth floor. The ninth floor then hired Beth Vesco Mock as a program director. After she was removed, Stanger replaced Vesco Mock with her supervisor from the ninth floor, Katrina Utz. During this time, the staff had no control over policies, protocols, or anything else that was put into place to run animal control. Complaints were made by volunteers or advisory board members, then orders would come down from the ninth floor dictating new policies to appease the complainants, with little regard to the care or health of the animals or the safety or staff or public. Unfortunately, Stenger has been removed from office and little has changed in the running of the animal shelter. We have now been placed under the Department of Public Health with Spring Schmidt as our appointing authority, yet nothing has changed. If anything, has, if anything, it has gotten worse. Since 2015, the staff of Animal Care Control have voiced internally their concerns over what has been going on with the running of the day-to-day -day operations. We have voiced concerns over who is actually in charge. Is it the volunteers? Is it the advisory board? Is it the citizens of St. Louis County and the taxpayers that pay for these services? The lack of understanding leads to a very confusing, chaotic, and hostile environment. Changes in the policy come about in the response to complaints by the volunteers or advisory board members. These policies from the ninth floor and the Department of Public Health that the staff feels were below standards and would result in decreased patient care or were unethical. 
The staff have voiced many times our concerns about these changes in policy. One big example was the change of the owner request euthanasia policy that no member of the animal control staff thought was appropriate. We were told by the ninth floor and then the Department of Public Health to perform these policies or disciplinary action would be taken. No matter who we have talked to, no, child, no changes in policy have happened until after the auditor's report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Next speaker is Kyle, and I cannot read the last name. Hi, I'm Kyle Freistack uh, from Fenton. Um, I'm here also to represent Animal Control and one of the officers. Um, the concerns of the staff over existing and changing policies of leadership have been voiced since 2015. These concerns in the hostile environment were brought by Sharon Garner, uh, an employee of the HR department. Her hands were tied in what was going on, even though we voiced it to her, she could not do anything about it. Um, we then had a meeting with a member of the ninth floor, Glenn Powers, about our concerns that did not result in any changes. Um, next, the ninth floor sent the head of personnel, Sue Daniels. Uh, we continued to have problems with Beth Fesco mocking her policies and the uh, dictates from the ninth floor and the Department of Public Health. We finally spoke with Fannie Lindo from personnel. Uh, Beth Veskelmach finally left, but in her place, Katrina Utz was uh, appointed, an employee from the ninth floor that report, uh, Beth Veskelmach reported to and had no, no experience running a shelter at all. We were then placed back under DPH under Spring Schmidt. On several occasions, we discussed problems with Spring Schmidt that we were having with Katrina and some of the more controversial policies that were put into place that the staff did not agree with and no changes were taking place. To this date, the employees at Animal Care and Control have not been heard. No one has listened, and though some leadership has been removed, nothing has changed. We do not have policies that the leadership of the DPH will allow us to follow. We continually react to volunteer and advisory board complaints without any formal change in policy or thought of the effect of the animal's care or the staff of the public safety. The only thought appears to be appeasing the complainants. The staff at Animal Care and Control have fought internally for years to get some of these suggestions that the recent audit recommended put into place or stopped. The audits now bring to light many of the concerns that the staff at Animal Care and Control have been trying to bring to the members of DPH for years um, and also the ninth floor and personnel. However, now instead of trying to work with the staff to best put practices in place and remove roadblocks, we're told that the shelter is so screwed up by following all the orders that we have been given by the ninth floor and the Department of Health by Spring Schmidt um, that they're not sure that they can continue to employ us. Spring Schmidt and the DPH are uh, considering contracting out all of our jobs um, to other organizations. All the employees that have been fighting for these changes for years will no longer have a job at Animal Care Control. Instead of listening to the employees and reversing the robots put into place by the ninth floor and the DPH, we are now being told that we may lose our jobs. The staff follows directions, try to work inter internally, <coughs> diligently, and improve policies and conditions to keep our jobs, and now we may lose them because we're following direct orders from them. The shelter has been set up to fail by the ninth floor and the DPH. We are not given the tools to succeed, so now the staff at Animal Care and Control, um, we don't even have the stability of a job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Crystal Harris. Folks, I'm going to ask you to um, please curtail your applause. I would suggest to you that your standing silence is uh, much more compelling and speaks uh, volumes, that um, applause is superfluous. And we also want to maintain some decorum. Please, come on. Hi, my name is Crystal Harris. I actually live in O'Fallon, Illinois, but I do work for St. Louis County Animal Care Control. Due to the policies that were put into place by the ninth floor and the Department of Public Health, we, the staff, have been victimized and vilified in the media by some of our own volunteers, some of our own advisory board members, by other rescue and interest groups, and by the public. We have been called murderers, been shamed, received death threats, and told we belong in jail. <laughs> The animal care and control staff takes the cyberbullying verbal abuse daily. While trying to care for the animals in our custody to the best of our abilities, within our resources and the policies given to us, it is time to stop the victimizing. The staff, 
the step and start holding people in, in charge accountable for their actions, for the policies that were put in place that prevented us from doing our jobs to the best of our abilities. Do not punish the staff further by giving our jobs away. All because we followed the policy directed to us by the ninth floor in Spring Schmidt with the Department of Public Health. The staff at Animal Care Control have people with five, 10, 20 plus years of experience. We know how to run the shelter. In fact, many of the suggestions that the auditors gave have, have been put in place prior to 2015. Unfortunately, when your foundation begins to crumble because of leadership in the high locations, such as the ninth floor or the Department of Public Health, it becomes hard to institute new policies, new programs, and hard to continue programs that have been working for us in the past. The recent audit also recommended a restructuring and revamping of the volunteer program in the advisory board. By restructuring these programs, it would allow for better co collaboration and communication with all parties. Mm -hmm. Animal care and control will then move forward in a positive manner with the volunteers and advisory board members with all parties working towards the same positive goals. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Amy Kretzer. Hello, I'm Dr. Amy Kreutzer. I'm one of the veterinarians in animal care and control. Um, the St. Louis County employees received an email yesterday from Dr. Sam Page about his first 100 days in office and the improvements made. Unfortunately, in animal care and control, that's not true yet. If anything, the employees see more politics at play and no positive changes to date. The staff has stayed silent in the public and the media for years because we were trying to protect our jobs, and we continue to hope that we can make a difference in the running of St. Louis, animal, St. Louis County Animal Care Control by voicing our concerns internally. However, recent events and the talk about bidding out our jobs has made us realize that staying silent is no longer an option. We are coming to you to make our voices heard about what is actually going on with the employees. We ask that you hear us and look into this matter as no one else that we have talked to seems to have done. If no one will help us and no one will listen, we have no other choice but to voice our concerns to other outlets, including possibly the media, and let everyone know what's going on. We, the staff, are tired. We, are, we no longer want to be political pawns. We would just like to come to a normal work environment without hostility and abuse. We would like to do our jobs and not live in fear of losing them because we followed the rules and policies that have been given to us. It's hard to work in an environment with the threat of losing your job at any time over your head just because you follow directions. Animal care and control needs to have the ability to rebuild our foundations, to put in place policies and programs that will move our shelter forward. We need time without all the external forces coming and attacking us from all sides. We need the higher authorities to back us and our wealth of knowledge to put in place best practices for our shelter. The shelter did not get broken in one night, and this will take time for us to rebuild everything that we had before and to move forward and put in new and better um, policies. Give us time to step back, regroup, build our foundation, build policies, revamp the volunteer and advisory board programs and the other audit suggestions. Give us time, six to 12 months without the ex external forces to bring back in all the programs that we know can make our shelter great. Allow the staff of Animal Care and Control to show you what we can do without all of the roadblocks in place before giving our jobs away. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Next speaker is Milton Rudy. I'm Milton Rudy from Oakville, uh, unincorporated St. Louis County, and welcome to all and congratulations to the new council members. And uh, I think that you're still, my understanding is you're still con trying to consider how close to put marijuana uh, manufacturing facilities to various other parts of uh, the county. So two weeks ago, I was here and I asked you if there was any reason for placing a medical marijuana facility closer than 1,000 feet to any sensitive area other than for financial considerations, like someone owns the property and wants to site uh, the facility there. Now I have three other questions for you. 
One, can you give me an example of where and why you would want to place a medical marijuana facility closer than a thousand feet to a residential area, church, school, or shopping area? Two, knowing full well that recreational use of marijuana will soon follow and maybe even magic mushrooms like in Colorado, can you give me an example of where and why you would want to place any marijuana facility closer than a thousand feet to a residential area, church, school, or shopping area? Three, some want a thousand feet, a foot difference and some want 300 foot difference. The difference is only 700 feet, so please tell me, why is this minuscule distance so important? <coughs> and finally, again, please leave unincorporated St. Louis out of consideration for any such facility as we la lack the governmental oversight provided by the incorporated areas of the county. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rudy. Next speaker is Lynn Gober. Good evening. My name is Lynn Gober. I cannot get the City Gate Animal Control audit details out of my head. County Animal Control reminds me of the now closed city shelter on Gasconade. On good days, dogs are lucky to get a 20, minute, 20 minutes of fresh air per 24 hours. Think about that. 23 hours and 40 minutes confined to an unsanitized kennel with zero enrichment. The audit revealed no surface with which dogs come in contact at county is properly disinfected. Not the ACO truck, not the intake room, not the intake exam table, not the animal cubbies, none of the get acquainted rooms, not dog kennels, not walking surfaces, not the pea gravel outside, not food and water dishes. The audit revealed there have been several parvo outbreaks at county in the past year, yet practices to prevent have been ignored. The audit revealed county receives weekly transport of unimmunized dogs from fluorescent animal control, dogs partially har potentially harboring contagious diseases. Healthy pre-adoption dogs are housed in 400 with kennel cough. Every day it is a new dog on medical. County AC has 17 caregivers, yet volunteers desperately trying to get 300 and 400 dogs outside before close were told just this past Saturday that there was no one available to help clean, not one, not two, but three poopy kennels in 300. Volunteers' time spent cleaning cost dogs in need of a potty walk, their walk. I'd like to ask the county council why county staff is not required to implement best practices and properly disinfect. Per the audit, foaming agents carelessly being sprayed on and immediately washed off kennels. Not all kennel surfaces are being sprayed. Depending upon the solution, it needs to sit for five to ten minutes. And why are dogs being returned to wet kennels? I question the competence of any county leadership who finds the current standards at County AC acceptable. Yesterday at 1.30, County AC staff had yet to fill in the 300 and 400 walking logs. Volunteers arrived and started first walks at 12.30, filling in dogs' names on the log as walks were taken. County AC dogs were yet again waiting almost 24 hours for a potty break. No staff, only dogs had yet been walked. I ask, what if volunteers did not show up? Would County AC dogs ever be walked? Current standard operating procedures at county are reckless at best, inhumane at worst, and a profound waste of county taxpayer money. We beg for change. We beg for swift implementation of audit recommendations. This shelter is a blemish on St. Louis County, and you are the leadership allowing this to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cover. <laughs> Next speaker is Hannah Mungamurray.
I thank the council for the time. I'm Hannah Mangamori. I was born in India and have legally mig migrated to USA 22 years ago. My favorite role model is Mother Teresa. She helped um, the poor Indians and protected them from dying as destitutes. Um, temple theocracy legalized religious polygamy and earned gold hoarded in temples like Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple in a poor neighborhood, but caste laws of theocracy forbid the use of this $22 billion worth of gold to help its poor neighbors. U.S. billionaires like Mr. Bill Gates took pity and donated to the poor in India. The victims do not mind where the help comes from, and we are grateful for the help um, given to us. And some of the higher caste ladies are being trained in computer coding skills and then uh, brought here using H4 visa, but some were bullied and some were battered when they refused to use fake resumes uh, to get IT jobs in USA. Being one of such caste ladies, I have come to express my gratitude, admiration, and hope to this council. You were all punctual, united, competent, caring, courageous, and wise in defeating stinger corruption in USA. You risked your future and careers to crush corruption, just as your black and white ancestors shed their brave blood to break the bondage of our black slaves in USA. We didn't. We in India still have slaves in India. We, the caste ladies of India, were complacent, even cowardly. We gave up the hope of crushing caste corruption in India and came to USA. Even after coming here, we allowed caste corruption in USA, hoping that our caste supremacist Indian men would allow our kids and parents to live in safety. But um, it is getting hard to bear. Um, caste corruption illegally took money out of US economy and hoarded it in India, causing American businesses to go bankrupt. In order to raise revenue, Missouri voters have voted to legalize medical marijuana. But you can, if you defeated the Stenger corruption, you can do it again. Please defeat caste corruption and raise revenues the right way by making caste corruption supremacists pay fines as punishment. You have been equipped with mighty minds, courage of a cop, logic of a lawyer, loving care of a medical doctor, the county executive, and four wise women. Women in India kept on pleading until abortion was banned in India after selective abortion killed many baby girls in the womb. Please help our show me state of Missouri to show other states how to defeat corruption, abortion, and drug death destruction. Um, I thank you again for um, pushing the buffer zone 2,000 feet, and I plead the council to please pass some legislation to defeat the caste corruption and help our caste ladies from being battered. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pongamari. Next speaker is Tracy Rump. Good evening. My name is Tracy Rump, and I'm here on behalf of the animals the, uh, in animal control here in St. Louis County. Um, per the animal control code, number four on your mission is prevention of mistreatment of animals within St. Louis County and protection and enhancement of the health and safety of animals in St. Louis County. That is not being done. It is not being achieved. We obviously being here tonight have heard all of them, have heard all of them. This is outrageous. I'm sure you're all aware that Missouri is the puppy capital of the United States. That's disgusting. We here in Animal Rescue, we are trying, every day we receive messages about dogs who are dumped, starved. Animal control has to change. It has to change. I, there's this, this, I'm sorry, I get emotional, but I'd track. like for Take you to hear this because this is important. It is a saying that says, if they breathe, they live. If they live, they think. If they think, they feel. Just like you and me. Please hear us. 
I reached out. Delaware is the first state who has become, they have become completely no-kill, the entire state. I did some research. I actually called, spoke to someone in Delaware who was a part of the shelter. There are solutions. We want to be a part of the solution. I teach my four children when there is an issue or a problem, be solution focused. We have to find a solution. You have, there are 17,000 volunteer or members of a group called Saving St. Louis Pets. I guarantee that every one of them, if they felt that you were doing the right thing, that you were standing up, they would, they would volunteer. They would do whatever you needed. You're not listening, and if you are listening, you don't care. That's what we see. Six months ago, before Steve Sanger left office, I emailed him every other day saying, I know that there's an issue at animal care, uh, uh, animal control. There are solutions. Please sit down with us. We, we have so many ideas. We can help you. Never once responded. I obviously now know why. Things need to change. We are begging you. I didn't write anything tonight. You have to see in our faces the pain we feel for these animals. I'm a mother. I have four kids. I have four dogs. They're my life. And I don't know how you can sit there and not take action. I, I don't know. Please be solution focused. Please help us, these animals, feel. This is not right. It's a huge blemish, huge. Please take a step. Call me, I'm a business owner, I'm a published author. I, I will sit down, I will do whatever it takes. We all will. Three minutes. Okay, right. I'm done. Just please, please do something. Thank you, Mr. Ruff. Next speaker is Lynn LaBob. Good evening, my name is Lynn LaBob and I'm from Afton. I'm here tonight to encourage you, the leaders of St. Louis County, to proceed cautiously as medical marijuana laws and ordinances are enacted. I would ask that you would follow the state's guidelines that require a thousand foot buffer between places of worship, secondary and elementary schools, and early childhood centers. I would also request that you enact a buffer zone between residential and any marijuana facility. On April 25th, 2017, the council, the council passed the following legislation that reads as follows. St. Louis County Ordinance Number 26352 establishes and authorizes the operation of a prescription drug monitoring program by St. Louis County Department of Public Health. The St. Louis County Prescription Drug Monitoring Program, or PDMP, monitors the prescribing and dispensing of Schedule II, 5 controlled substances to assist in the identification and prevention of pre pre prescription drug misuse and abuse. One of the program's goals is to reduce the number of people who misuse, abuse, or overdose while making sure patients have access to safe, effective treatment. The last report I heard is over 660 applications have been filed to sell and cultivate marijuana in St. Louis County. So we need, so we know medical marijuana will be easily accessible, no question there. Is that also another pay to play? I don't know. My question is, or however, though the real concern is our children and what the normalization of marijuana is going to do to them if we don't set some boundary to protect them. Is asking for a thousand foot buffer zone unreasonable? I don't think so. Recently, the New York Post wrote an article titled, The Link Between Pot and Mass Shootings May Be Closer Than We Think. 
I've printed off a copy for each of you to read. Keep in mind, the New York Post is a liberal paper. So I hope that it will get your attention. Secondly, I want to conclude with a testimony written by a parent. It's called Moms with an S Strong.org. There are many stories of what marijuana has done to young people. A former resident of Colorado who is, who is a former marijuana user who is dead set against legislation of any farm. She experienced back in the 1970s how it affected her life and led to a stronger drug and alcohol abuse. And I know that all the other back doors, she says, I know that all the other back doors to legalization are exactly that, it's back door. Her daughter, husband, and she left Colorado due to the, what legislation did, not only to their neighborhood, which was dirty needles, homeless camping in our backyards at night, drugs hidden in window wells, increase in auto theft and theft in general, but to their family as well. To her, with her daughter, who is in her 20s and finally living a productive and well-adjusted life in Texas, got sucked into marijuana use in Colorado and in, in, ended up in the emergency room twice. Both times the ER doctor thought other drugs were involved, but the tests were conclusive that it was marijuana. The number of marijuana-induced psychotic breaks in Colorado is staggering. So with that being said, I would like to ask that we make sure that there's a solid buffer zone between our children and the potential effects of how marijuana in industry will tempt our young people as well as influence them to make poor choices and decisions. And I apologize, but I have to make, my brother I, died I of need cancer. You to sum up, Ms. okay, if you don't mind. My brother died of cancer. I get the medical marijuana. I understand it. It's great of emotion to me. But I can't understand why we can't have one cultivation, one cultivation in the area that transports to a hospital that goes to the medical marijuana cancer patients. That's what we need, not recreational marijuana. Thank you, Ms. Lovato. Final speaker this evening is Tom Sullivan. Mr. Presiding Officer, I have a few things to mention. The Attorney General's Office has begun to investigate three complaints I filed a few weeks ago against the County Council for violations of the Sunshine Law. The Council has until August 22nd to respond. There are other complaints pending, and after last week's meeting, additional complaints will be filed. Council agendas often do not conform to the law. I continue to collect information on the link markets at the two metro stations as they've drawn considerable interest from county government. I wonder if those involved have ever actually visited the markets. So I asked the county executive's chief of staff, Winston Calvert, who thinks the markets have some importance, if he ever visited them. I asked twice, but got no response. I assume he never has. Councilwoman Clancy and former Councilwoman Hazel Irby have also been interested in the link markets. I asked both if they have ever visited the markets. No response from Councilwoman Clancy, but Hazel Irby said she has been a customer on occasion. I have also wondered if anyone from the county executive staff has been attending the MSD rate commission meetings held in recent weeks. Needless to say, sewer bills are a matter of importance for homeowners, and the county executive will soon be appointing an MSD board member. I asked Director of Operations Mike Chapman about this on July 24th, but got no response. A follow-up days later, also received no response. So I assume no one from the county executive's office attended any of the rate commission meetings or even attends MSD board meetings, despite the small army working in the county executive's office. I was also interested if anyone from the county executive's office attended Metro Transit board meetings in May or June. I asked Director of Communications Doug Moore about this, but got no response. A second request brought this reply. I do not have that information, but trust the mentioned agency could help you with attendance matters. Imagine that. A communications director who makes $100,000 a year is unable to answer a simple question from a citizen. Sam Page is now the second county executive in a row to promise an open government, but then not keep his promise. The county executive issued a 30-page report yesterday on his first 100 days. 
He didn't take credit for the sun rising and setting for those 100 days, but he did for just about everything else. It is a campaign document that should have been issued and paid for by his campaign committee, not taxpayers. Some of the, quote, accomplishments are more than a little inane, such as embraced strategic planning and embraced budgetary discipline. I was especially surprised to learn there is no politics in county government anymore and that all citizens have a voice. The county executive also says he saved access to fresh foods at the link markets, a questionable claim. Last Friday during lunch hour, both markets were closed. The one in Wellston is closed almost all the time. I assume Sam Page never visited the markets either. Also, I heard Mr. Page on the radio today reciting the social justice platitudes about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Given his record in these areas, his words sounded pretty empty. Since the county executive can't even get the weeds cut at the old Jamestown Mall, this could, this could describe his first 100 days. Plenty of platitudes, but not much progress. Thank you, Mr. Tragus. Thank you, Tom. That concludes public forum. Let's proceed with introductions of bills. Bill number 221, introduced by Council Member Tragus, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $107,089.44 from the Missouri Department of Social Services, appropriating the same for support of the Kathy J. Weinman Shelter and authorizing the county executive to execute necessary documents. Bill number 222, introduced by Council Member Tragus, an ordinance accepting a grant of up to $267,264 from the State of Missouri Department of Economic Development, Division of Workforce Development for a Summer Jobs League program, depositing and appropriating said monies as set forth herein, and authorizing the county executive to execute necessary documents. Bill number 223, introduced by Council Member Trakis, an ordinance authorizing the county councilor to execute a contract with Bick and Kistner PC for representation in matters related to the investigation and litigation of the leases at the crossings at Northwest and Northwest Plaza Office Tower. Bill number 224, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance declaring the public necessity of and providing for establishing of a section of public road designated as Greenwood Boulevard, establishing a section of public road designated as Pacific Avenue, both lying wholly within the city of Maplewood, Missouri, directing the acquisition of real property, therefore, and authorizing the county executive to execute contracts, agreements, and related documents, AR-1670. Bill number 225, introduced by Council Member Trakis. An ordinance appropriating and setting apart the sum of $4,789 from the unappropriated balance of the Transportation Trust Fund for payment of said funds service charge to the General Revenue Fund. Bill number 226, introduced by Council Member Tragus, an ordinance authorizing the County Executive to execute a contract with St. Louis Area Diaper Bank to provide free diapers to the Department of Public Health Nurse Family Partnership Program. Bill number 227, introduced by Council Member Tragus, an ordinance appropriating and setting apart the amount of one. $1,110,215 from the unappropriate balance of the Police Asset Sharing Fund for purchase of specialized law enforcement equipment. Bill number 228, introduced by Council Member Tragus, an ordinance amending Title 12, St. Louis County Revised Ordinances 1974 as amended, Traffic Code, by deleting one provision from Schedule 6 and by enacting and adding one provision to Schedule 6. Mr. Presiding Officer, that is all the bills. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, perfection of bills. Bill number 20, introduced by Council Member Harder. Please hold. Bill number 20 is held. Bill number 102, introduced by Council Member Clancy. Please hold. Bill number 102 is held. Bill number 194, introduced by Council Member Walton Gray. Hold, please. Bill number 194 is held. Bill number 204, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Um, I'm going to move to perfect bill number 204. Um, before we proceed, though, I just want to acknowledge the um, assistance and feedback from by state regarding my questions. I appreciate their responsiveness. Um, and so this bill will proceed with respect to the refinancing of their bonds. That said, I expect the council to do a, a pretty intense deep dive into their operating budget as well as their plans for security through at least one and very likely two hearings. But with that, I move for the perfection of Bill number 204. Is there a second? Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Roll call. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trachis? Aye. Council Member Harder? No. Mr. Presiding Officer, on Bill Number 204, you have four ayes and one no. Very well. Bill Number four is perfect. 204 is perfected. Bill Number 207, introduced by Council Member Trachis. I move to hold Bill Number 207, and Bill Number 207 is held. Bill Number 208, introduced by Council Member Fitch. Please hold. Bill Number 208 is held. Bill number 214, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect Bill number 214. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 214 is perfected. Bill number 215, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect Bill number 215. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 215 is perfected. Bill number 216, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect Bill number 216. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 216 is perfected. Bill number 217, introduced by Council Members Walton Gray, Clancy, and Fitch. I move to perfect Bill number 217. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 217 is perfected. Bill number 218, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect Bill number 218. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 218 is perfected. Bill number 219, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect Bill number 219. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 219 is perfected. Bill number 220, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move to perfect Bill number 220. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 220 is perfected. Final passage of bills. Bill number 209, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move for final passage of bill number 209. Second. Roll call. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Presiding Officer, on Bill Number 209, you have five ayes. Bill and Number one Two. Absent. Sorry. Bill Number 209 is finally passed. Bill Number 210, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move for final passage of Bill Number 210. Second. Roll call. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Mr. Presiding Officer, on Bill 210, you have five ayes and one absent. Bill number 210 is finally passed. Bill number 211, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move for final passage of Bill number 211. Second. <coughs> Roll call. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Presiding Officer, on Bill 211, you have five ayes and one absent. Bill number 211 is finally passed. Bill number 212, introduced by Council Member Fitch. I move for Councilman Fitch for final passage of Bill number 212. Second. Roll call. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Presiding Officer, on Bill 212, you have five ayes and one absent. Very well. Um, bill number 212 is finally passed. Bill number 213, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Move for final passage of Bill number 213. Second. Roll call. Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakis? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Presiding Officer, on Bill 213, you have five ayes and one absent. Very well. Bill number 213 is finally passed. Mr. Presiding Officer, we have one resolution this evening. I move for the adoption of resolution number one. Second. Call the roll. 
Council Member Dunaway? Aye. Council Member Fitch? Council Member Gray? Aye. Council Member Clancy? Aye. Council Member Trakis? No. Council Member Harder? No. Mr. Presiding Officer, on Resolution 1, you have three ayes, two noes, and one absent. Very well, that it appears then that uh, Resolution 1 is not adopted. Unfinished. Sorry, moving on to unfinished business. Item number one, third district. Uh, holds on the order of business for Councilman Fitch. Item number two. Hold on the order of business. And that will be the order. Except same thing with respect to uh, order number or item number twelve. Um, item number one under unfinished business. I'm sorry. New under business. New business. We have one prepared order this evening. I move the, for the adoption of order number one. Amen. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Order number one is adopted. Any other um, comments by council members? Motion to adjourn. Ms. I'm Ms. sorry, I'm sorry, hold on one second. Um, we will have um, someone from the health department come next week and give us a report on uh, an update on the implementation of the audit and the um, status of the RFP process. And I'm especially interested in the impact on the county employees. We'll know more next week what those plans look like. And I will ask that the employees are included in the conversation about the scope of work of the audit but we'll make sure that um, we know more about what, what the plans are next week. We'll be able to answer some of your questions. And I would also like to commend all of the, the people that spoke tonight. Your voices were heard. Trust me on that. Um, this is not the prior administration. We will not ignore your concerns. County Executive Page um, is doing an exemplary job with what he was left with in the first 100 days. So. Let's not um, uh, take his words lightly or as if he doesn't mean them. Trust me, I know him well, and he does. And this council has heard you, and we will look into um, the, the issues related to the Animal Control Center as well as other issues. So, um, motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.